If he did not support Scientology or was hostile to it, he would be declared a suppressive person and Marla would be forbidden to have any contact. At the least he was being handled. As this video shows, Kent Snyder worked regularly and closely with CCHR, actively promoting legislation favorable to them. This bill is not successful, is not passed. Then two or three or four years from now, what you're going to find is you're going to find stories of parents who said, why didn't we work harder? My child is now subject to mental screening. He's now subject to therapy. There's all sorts of coercive measures that are going on. So the time is now. Parents need to understand that. And we're going to do everything we can to, to, to fight against it. This is important because there is an attempt to rationalize Ron Paul's involvement with CCHR and founding member Dr. Zass is harmless. On the Ron Paul forums when a supporter points out the Scientology connection, another member tries to spin Zass as a great libertarian who is not a Scientologist nor is sympathetic to Scientology. This is bullshit. CCHR is a branch of Scientology and SZAZS co-founded it. The Church of Scientology would never allow someone they did not control to have that much influence. The CCHR website was registered by Scientologist Amber Smayadaki. Most of the board are Scientologists. Zias denies being a Scientologist. A representative writes, Sharing this battle does not mean that Dr. Zias supports the unrelated principles and causes of any religious or non-religious organization. This can be true working with most organizations. But as we have shown, Scientology does not work this way. You are either for Scientology or you are against it. Whether SZAZS himself believes in Xenu is irrelevant. What is relevant is Scientology considers Zass non-hostile and therefore successfully handled. Kent Snyder may have something in common with Lisa McPherson. His involvement with the cult might have killed him. Like Zass, Scientology believes in an extreme version of personal responsibility. That disease is a result of body thetans and it is the Scientologists' fault for not trying hard enough to clear them. If they did, goes the theory, they would be free of disease. Zias doesn't push body thetans, but he does promote a dangerous distorted idea of mental illness that has the same potential effect. Discouraging people from getting help because according to him any problems they have are imaginary. The CCHR was created in 1969 founded by the Church of Scientology and by famous renegade psychiatrist Dr. Thomas Zaz. From day one, most or many of the senior leadership of the CCHR have been Scientologists. And for Zaz, and of course this has been taken on uh, big time by Scientology, uh, therefore mental illness is not real illness. It is possible Kent Sanders' untreated illness and death was a result of adopting the Scientologist beliefs that his illness was his fault or not real. It would explain why he had no health insurance. Many Scientologists don't. It seems Snyder sincerely believed in Ron Paul's libertarian rhetoric and equally trusted his Scientologist friends, though this ultimately was not in his best interest. A further question arises. How many of Scientology ideas are influencing Ron Paul's campaign for liberty through CCHR and ZAS? The Scientology connection to Ron Paul has been noted in a handful of disingenuous threads on the Ron Paul forum. They are disingenuous because they ask questions a Google search can answer in seconds, yet few people link to these results. The threads are phishing members to see how much Paul supporters know about the connection, and when someone appears knowledgeable, the information is spun. In one of these threads Scientologists in Clearwater are praised for organizing one of Ron Paul's events in 2007. The writer clearly doesn't understand the significance of saying Scientologists and former Scientologists are involved. It's possible he is confused or misinformed. It's also possible Scientologists are lying about no longer being in the church. It would be a glaring anomaly that, everywhere else former Scientologists are considered SPs to be shunned by current members except for those working on the Ron Paul campaign. More likely Scientology finds it expedient to muddle the connection by having members involved of how they are former Scientologists. Since most Paul supporters don't know the first thing about Scientology or how to check the information, Ron Paul's campaign manager Kent Snyder had a close working relationship with the Scientology group CCHR from at least 2005. Snyder worked closely with Scientologists at the same time he worked in politics to make Ron Paul the household name he is today. Snyder helped push legislation favorable to Scientology. 
To do this he made PR videos approved by CCHR. In turn CCHR supported and promoted Ron Paul's presidential candidacy, most blatantly in the pay-to-play luncheon on November 28, 2007 the day of the debates. Campaign donation records from Clearwater, Florida show some members. Ron Paul personally met and talked with these people who collectively donated at least $19,000 that afternoon to his campaign. Ron Paul knew they were CCHR it is implausible. Working as closely with CCHR as he had, Paul did not know he was for all purposes working with Scientology. Another fact not as well known. In 2002 Ron Paul won the Thomas S. Zass Award as a tireless defender of individual freedom. That puts Ron Paul's personal association with Scientology back almost a decade. It stretches credibility that Snyder was unaware of the Lisa McPherson situation and other Scientology crimes and abuses. Snyder was no doubt deep in denial about the events that led to December 5th death of McPherson at Scientologist hands. Otherwise why work with Scientology? This shows effectively the Ron Paul presidential campaign and Ron Paul himself have been influenced by Scientology for years. So it was no surprise in 2008. When approached with concerns about Scientology's tax-exempt status, Ron Paul was dismissive. His statement I understand your concerns about Scientology implies Ron Paul was aware of the problems of the so-called church and the fact independent observers consider it a criminal cult. In spite of this understanding he had no problem speaking with them and taking their money. He would also have no about the pre-chainology protest against Scientology since at least one in memory of Lisa McPherson was targeted at CCHR during their Industry of Death Museum opening, that Kent Snyder attended. The question is, how much does Ron Paul owe to Scientology, and what does Scientology expect in return? The total amount of contributing dollars by Scientology to Campaign for Liberty may never be known, whatever the amount. Do not doubt Scientology expects a return on their investment in Ron Paul should he ever actually win the presidency. Paul supporters will try to dismiss this like they dismiss concerns about Ron Paul's donation from racist Stormfront.org founder Dunn Black. As odious as Black is, there is no evidence people have died opposing Stormfront.org. There is ample evidence the lives of critics of Scientology have been threatened and lost. Scientology plays hardball with anyone who challenges them. The same can be expected of anyone who tries to double-cross the cult. If Paul supporters find this hard to believe, they should familiarize themselves with Operation Snow White, where Scientology bullied the IRS for tax-exempt status. An organization that can strong-arm the IRS is not going to find a misguided Rospero wannabe hard to handle. To this day Scientology, through CCHR, works with Ron Paul. Anyone critical of Scientology is a suppressive person to be disconnected. Therefore we can conclude Scientology's leadership does not view Ron Paul or his supporters as suppressive persons. Scientology views them as allies to be handled and that should worry everyone concerned about freedom. Scientology is not about freedom, it is about control, and it would rather let someone die than 